the first step to mounting the GPS is to find a location and get it mounted securely and then you need to go into the software and tell the software actually where you put it. In my case, the center of my frame, uh, dead center, is the balance point left and right, which would be this way, and fore and aft, which would be this way. Also, you have to balance it on the z-axis, which is going to be standing it vertical. In order to get the CG for it vertical, you have to suspend the model. And you can see that I'm actually hanging almost straight, almost level. Uh, holding it here. I'm actually a little bit ahead, so I need to move forward. So now instead of being on the arm, I am actually on the plate. So my CG is on the plate. Now if I were to hang a camera out here, my CG would, would fall or the model would fall this way, so that means I'd have to back up. At any point, you got to figure out where that balance point is on your frame so that it stands straight up. That is the Z balance point. To the left, it's a negative number. If it's setting to the right, it's a positive number. If the GPS is setting forward of the CG, then it's a positive number. If it's setting behind the CG, then it's a negative number. If the disc is setting above the, the CG, then it is a negative number, and if it's below it, it's a positive number. So in my case, I'm setting up and to the right, so my X and Y are, are positive numbers, and because I'm setting above the CG, my uh, number for the Z is a negative number. Okay, remove all electronic devices as well as keys, anything metal from your pockets. And go ahead and arm the model and you see we're ready to go we have the, just the green flashing light so now we're going to go into calibration mode for the GPS so I'm going to use the flight mode switch and I'm going to flip it several times six to ten times and you can see now I have a solid yellow light And today I'm going to talk about course lock, home lock, and what their effects are. The very first thing I need to do is make sure that I have the model oriented in a way that I can remember what that orientation was. So rather than have the model setting this away, where forward would be going that way, I'm actually going to make sure and turn the model so that it is going straight down the runway or straight across the runway. For this demonstration, I'm going to face the model so that it's going down the runway. So now we're ready. I'm going to bring the model to a hover, and I'm just going to be doing normal flying, and uh, I'm going to turn some lights on there so that we can see the orientation maybe. It might show up a little better. The sun's starting to come up now, so uh, it may not be as helpful as it has been. but. Right now you're looking at the side, you're looking at the right side of my model. And on the right side, uh, the front is where the green lights are, the back is where the yellow lights are. If I rotate the model around, now the model is facing to the north, and we're looking at the back of it, so we have all red lights. Rotate it on around again. The front is where the uh, 
green is, and the back is where the yellow is. So if I rotate on around, now we're looking at the nodes. The front is all purple lights, and the, the, the uh, yellow lights in the back simply mean that's front of the back booms. So now, now that we have orientation on the model, let's go back to remembering that I energized the model and I had it facing down the runway. So a quick tip for you is if you're going to fly, you want to be sure and stay oriented. I want to keep the transmitter pointed down the uh, runway toward the east. Um, with that said, let me show you about home lock and course lock. We're going to go ahead and fly out a little ways. And notice I'm keeping the model fairly low. You, that's a really good idea to do that because you're going to, usually you're going to break less parts the lower you are to the ground. Um, and for this, I highly recommend probably no higher than that is all that's needed. Also, stick inputs. Don't give a lot of input. Just a little bit because the thing is going to respond. gives you a chance to see what's happening with it. Now, we need an imaginary circle around the point where I took off, 10 meters out. What I'm going to do is right now, let's say uh, the model is, of course, facing due north, straight ahead. So if I push the stick forward, it's going to go keep going forward. We're going to leave it in that orientation for a moment. What I want you to realize is whenever I click on home lock, the model is going to come back to here by me pulling the stick straight back. If I go into home lock and pull the stick straight back, see, it's coming back. I'm going to turn the model and face the model west. Now we're looking at the side of it. The model is facing west. The back of the model is facing east. But again, I'm in home lock. If I pull the stick straight back, the model is going to come back toward us. See here? So now I want you to watch what happens to the model whenever it hits that imaginary 10 meter circle. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back, it's coming back. Whoa, right there. See how it took off and went that way? That's because what happened is it actually went into the course lock. And I'm able to stay oriented with the model and talk to you because I'm going to hold my transmitter the same way that it was whenever I took off. So it's oriented with the model the way it took off. So what? If I'm going to I'm going to turn the model, now we're nose in. And by being nose in. If I move the stick forward, you would think, well, he's nose in. The model's going to come to us if he moves the stick forward. Well, that's not exactly what's going to happen. Here we go. I'm going to push the stick forward. I can tell you already the model's going to go that way. Ready? There it is. Okay. And it's because even though I'm in home lock, you're thinking, well, wait a minute. He's in home lock. If you push the stick forward, the model should fly away because if he pulls the stick back, it's supposed to come back here. Well. True, but once you enter this circle, this imaginary 10 meter radius here, the model automatically switches in the course lock. So now, no matter how far I go out, it's not going to change. It's still in course lock. So see, if I want it to come back to me, I move the stick to the right. If I want it to go away, I move the stick to the left. That's because I got the radio set, set in this way. I got it oriented right. If I turn this way and I move the stick forward, what way is the model going to go? You're right, it's going to go that way. Here we go. Because it's in course lock. Again, even though I'm in home lock. Again, it, that's because I got into the circle, it switched out, and it'll stay in course lock until I exit the intelligent orientation control or until I exit or turn off the IOC. So again, to bring the model to me, I'm going to move the stick to the right because right is to me. Here we go. See? Just move the stick to the right, and it moves. Um, but if I go out of intelligent orientation control, so now I've turned it off, now if I move the stick to the right, the model is actually going to go behind me or go down toward the west because it's oriented the way the model is oriented or the way the model is facing. The nose is facing to me, so right stick would mean right input or right turn for the model, so the model's going to go west. Here we go. Let's move the stick straight over, and it's going to the west. So, but I'm going to rotate. I'm going to go back out. And again, 
I'm going to stop it. I'm going to home lock, pull the stick back, it's coming back to me. Until it, uh, and I'm going to move it to the west a little, or to the east a little bit. Pull the stick back, it's coming back to me until it gets in this imaginary 10, 10 meters. And then it's going to switch and go straight west. Ready? I'm going to lower it so we can keep an eye on it. All right, here we go. Ready? Here we go. It's coming to me. Just pulling the stick straight back. And I'm not going to move the stick. I'm just going to let it keep coming. 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 Right there. See how it switched and, and went? Now it's in course lock. And I apologize for being out of camera view. So let me get back in camera view. Again, I'm in course lock now. So if I want the model to go away from me, I move the stick away. Because I've got the radio oriented with the way I took off. So really, really important, guys. Best tip I can give you. Orient this radio with the way you energize. And you will pick up on this course lock and home lock stuff really, really quick. If you don't, you'll, you'll spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. Um, but once you get it, once you figure it out, it's like, oh, okay, that's how it works. The light bulb will go off, so to speak. But again, because I got the radio warrior in it, the way I took off, left stick means left turn on the model. Or in this case, going to the left. Again, doesn't matter which way it's oriented. Again, left stick means going that way. Because it's now the, the model's going to go the way the stick moves. Move the stick forward, the model's going to go forward. Move the stick back, the model's coming back. Move the stick to the right, it's coming to us. Go the other way, it's going away. So, out of course lock, now I have to remember to look at the model and see which way it's oriented. So the back is facing to the east, so if I want it to go that way, now i got to pull the stick back. See? So I hope this has been helpful to you. It's a lot of fun, especially to, to learn this, and it's really, really neat whenever you know what's going to happen every time you give the stick input. So um, go out and, and fly safe and uh, have fun. I know I'm having a blast, and I hope you've enjoyed the, the videos that I put together. Thanks for your time.